how to do. So in the last couple of years, we had tons of UI libraries popping up, right? And especially for React, there's prob probably like two dozen of them out there. And you know, it's so hard to actually find one that I really enjoyed. I'm not sure about you. You can write it down in the comments, but like React Bootstrap, for example, I mean, it's cool, but does it look that nice, really? I mean, come on, come on, man. That's not nice. Um, and then you have style, style components coming along, so you write the CSS and JS kind of stuff, and that was cool for a while, um, but then that came with its own downsides. And then since server components popped up, then you had all of these issues of these UI clients not even working, only in your client components. So it got quite messy. and. I found simplicity in Tailwind, and I love Tailwind, and I'm still gonna push Tailwind because I think it's one of the best ways to style your applications in general. Uh, not only it's pretty much faster than any UI library out there, it's even faster than if you decide to write vanilla CSS. But I really want to have components that I don't want to build out from scratch, like calendars, sliders, forms especially if they don't have accessibility and stuff like that, right? That's really hard to get. So what we're going to take a look at is a closed web browser. Dav, a closed web browser, uh, chat CDN, CN, not CDN, <laughs> um, which essentially is, look at this, look how gorgeous this is. They're beautifully designed components built on top of Radix UI. And Radix UI essentially are uh, these components that are unstyled and unopinionated, but they have all the necessary accessibility for you to get going. Uh, so here we go. If you check out Radix UI, as you can see, why waste time reinventing UI components uh, when you have them here and they're unstyled, so you can do whatever you want with them, but they have the accessibility, right? So when you're making forms, one of the most annoying thing is adding the accessibility to it. So chat CN was built on top of this. So what we're gonna do is essentially create a, yeah, here are all the components, but we're just gonna choose one for this episode. I'm gonna go with skeleton and I'll show you probably one of the simplest ways you can implement this. So let's get going. Okay, cool, so here we go. So we just have a hello here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fetch some games. And if the games are not loaded yet, then we're gonna pop in a skeleton for us. So to get started now, you would usually just not even have to install anything with chat CDN because uh, it was never intended to be used like that. It was intended for you to just go here, find a specific uh, UI component, maybe, let's see, maybe the alert here, right? And you can just copy paste the code and that's it. But now they have a CLI, which is really cool. Uh, so you can just pop in and install that specific component that you need. So if we head over here to the CLI, you can run this command here called mpx chat cdn ui init. All right. So if we run this, I already ran this. Uh, and if you have Tailwind as well installed, um, it's going to add all the necessary configuration to it, should I say. All right, so after we run this, perfect. Now we can just head down to any component that we want to use. And I may make a, a video. Let me know if you want to see a more in-depth video on chat CDM. Maybe we can build out like a whole whole app with it. That'd be quite fun, actually. Um, but yeah, let's head over back here and we're going to search for skeleton. So here we go. All we need to do is run this command npx chat CDN at skeleton. I'm going to use npm for that. And I think I already did it. Once you install it, so once you add it like that, it's going to create a... Oops, let me close that up. Uh, it's going to create a component here for you automatically. Just like that. Super cool. Okay, so let's actually create something here because we have absolutely nothing now. And that's the present. So what we're going to do is... Yeah, fetch some games. So I'm using ROG, RAR <laughs> API for fetching games. Uh, so all we can do is just do a const get games here and set that equal to an async function like that. Cool. And then in here we can say const response. And here we are going to do a fetch request. 
So again, I'm using, let's see, where is it? Rogue API. All right, and yeah, you can fetch any games. You can fetch popular games, shite games like Redfall, uh, really good games like Zelda. Um, but yeah, you just get your API key, you add it in here, and then you fetch the game. So let's see that. Await fetch, and the link to this is gonna be HTTPS, like that. Let me see here, API io slash api slash games and then here i can add my key which i just added to my uh emv local here all right so that's where my api key lies so i can just add it with process emv dot rogue like that cool now i can check if the response is not okay so i can say if res is not okay that means i have some sort of error so I can just throw a new error and say uh, failed to fetch. But if everything is okay, I can say const data is equal to await res.json like that. All right, and I need to return this. So I'm gonna say return data like that. I guess you could do it in one line, but it is what it is. Okay, so now here, uh, this is a server component, right? If you don't have use client at the top here, that means you're working in a server component. Um, so what we can do here is just say const games equals get games like that. And we have to add a weight as well like that. Perfect. All right. So remember, this is an async component here. Uh, and let's let's see if that works. We're gonna console log out games, have a look here, and try to visit the localhost 3000 so we can actually see if we can fetch that data. And looks like we did. Look, get request 200, it was hit. Uh, and if we scroll up here, we get to see all the different properties that we can use. And now one note here is that it's an object, as you can see, and you have counts, next, previous, and results. Now results is the array that actually holds all the games. So I'm gonna return that, data.results. And I'm not gonna take everything out, so I'm only gonna pull a couple of things out here in my types. So I'm gonna say type game equals to, I'll just pass in the ID, we'll do a background, uh, image, which is going to be a type string. We're going to do a rating, which is a type of number and a name. That's a type of string. Again, all I did was literally go through all of the shite and I pulled out the uh, necessary properties that I want to use in my app. So in this case, I'll just use these four. Um, all right. And the way we can add it is here in the get games, you can add a colon and say promise and add this as a generic right here. But we wanna make sure we also add an array here um, because we have multiple ones, right? We have an array of game objects. So we pass that in there. And as you can see now, um, TypeScript works on my games down here. So if I do games dot uh, map over each game like that, I can return a diff for example uh, with a key of game dot and look at that we have the auto completes so I'll return game ID there okay cool so I added the h1 here saying game name the p tag and the image now the way I like to work with the image tag is to just add a fill on it and then I can customize everything else with the class name so by default fill is literally gonna just take up all the space uh, relative to the outer div that it has. So if I wrap this in a div like that, and I can go here and add a class name to this and say I want it to have an aspect of video, which is 16 by nine, and I can add a relative. So it sizes according to that. And there we go, look at that. We have a nice system here going. It's not like responsive or anything, but we can quickly make that. I'm gonna go to the main tag here and I'm gonna start off by just adding a, some margins. M24, there we go. Just so it's not all stuck up there. I can add a rounded MD. Um, then we're gonna do a grid. 
All right, I'm gonna say grid calls four. There we go, so we have four columns now. And I'm also gonna add a gap of 12, like that. Cool, perfect. Now what I'm gonna do on this inner diff here, where, where I'm looping over, I'm gonna add a class name to this as well. And I'm gonna say call span four. So how, how much should this div span across these columns? Because remember, we have four columns. So I'm saying stretch from one to four and hit save. So that means it's taking up all the space. Now, if we go on larger screens, I can say call span should be two. So there we go. So if I go really small, it's gonna go to one. If I go bigger, it's gonna go to two. Now you can keep going like this if you want, if you wanna do, and on large screens, I want a call span of one, right? So then you would have four. There we go. No, you, I probably don't want that. That doesn't look too good. So I'm just gonna get rid of that and keep four. There we go. Two, sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. So we got that going for us, which is nice. Uh, yeah, you could style up the text and everything, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that. So how can we do this? What if I go up here and I say something like, await new promise, and we'll have a resolve here, like that. And I'm gonna say set timeout, set timeout to resolve and 2000. All right, what does this code do? So essentially we're awaiting and creating a promise and we're resolving the promise in the same line of code. And basically we're adding a delay with set timeout. So we're saying as long as the set timeout is running, basically stop this from finishing. Wait for this promise to resolve. And when it resolves, keep going and fetch the data. So in our case, it's gonna take two seconds for this promise to be resolved. So if we refresh the page now, uh, I guess we'd have to close this and go back. Uh, you're gonna get a blank page for two seconds, right? And you don't want that when your data is loading. So how can we transform this and create a skeleton? Super easy. In Next 13, what you can do is just go to the page um, or the folder where you have the page and create a loading.tsx, okay? Cool. And then what we can do is say imports, sorry, export function <laughs> default. Fun I always get these wrong, do you? Oh my God, I found, find it impossible. I, I always do export function default or I don't even know how I do it. Sometimes I start doing const. Doesn't matter, who cares? <laughs> Let's try to return something. So here I can just pretty much copy paste this over like that. And I just need to make a couple of wee changes. So first of all, we need to import uh, that skeleton that we got from ChatCDN. So there we go, import skeleton like that. And since we don't have any, what you call games here, right? We're not fetching any data and we don't wanna fetch data because that's the whole point. We're trying to stop and show something else whilst the data is fetching. So what we can do is do something quite fun here. We can say array. And we can say from, and I'm gonna say here length in an object of 12, all right? And then after this object, I'm gonna add a comma and do an underscore and an I, and then I'm gonna run a function here like this. Oops, like that. Okay, I'm gonna say I plus one. And then we can map over it the same way. So essentially what I'm doing here is just creating an array from scratch and I'm getting the index and I'm adding a one to that index. And then here, I'm just gonna say ID. It doesn't really matter what I add here. I just wanna make sure I can loop over it like 12 times. Uh, here we can leave this empty, that's fine. And I'm gonna get rid of this as well because we're not gonna add any HTML here. We're just gonna control everything with the styling and the image can go as well. All right, 
So again, I'm just, uh, yeah, creating uh, an array from scratch here. I'm looping over it. And then here, I guess I should add the key. I'm just gonna pop an ID here for now, that's fine. Let's get rid of this old one. And let's see what other errors we have. And it looks like we don't. So as you can see, we just have this flashing white screen now, and then we get our text back. So rather than doing a H1 here, what we can do is say skeleton instead, like that. And here I can add a class name to it, and I'm just gonna add a bit of height to it. So I'm gonna say height is gonna be six, and the width is gonna be, let's see, half of this card. Now if we refresh, look at that, we are getting a nice loading animation right there. Now if it's hard to see, Feel free to customize it. You can do a BG gray of 200 on it. Hit save and look at that. Cool. So I can do the same thing basically for the paragraph here. Let's turn this into a skeleton. And rather than doing this, I can still keep the margin bottom. I guess I could do a margin bottom of like two at the top as well. And then here, all I need to do is again, I can do a height of six or whatever you prefer width of maybe a quarter of that because it's really small and let's refresh and there we go how cool is that and finally for the video again I can just make a new skeleton here from scratch to be honest and just add a class name to this and do maybe like a rounded of medium I think I had on it width is gonna be full I'm gonna add a large height to it and a background let's do something else like 400 and do a refresh and take a look at that. That's pretty cool. Maybe that's a bit too big. Maybe you do it, you know, in like a more responsive fashion and a hard coded like that. Oh, why is that not working? Height 84 and hit save. That is weird. H, why is that not working? 80, that's gonna work. And there we go. Look at that, boom. How cool is that? So we added a full-on skeleton and barely any lines of code. Yeah, I like that. That's really cool. All right, so that's going to be it for me. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of chat CDN. CN, CN, not CDN. Uh, have you played with it? Do you like it? Do you have fun with it? Hopefully in a non-weird non way. Um, and yeah, that's going to be it for me. Please drop a subscribe if you enjoy the content on this channel. I'd really appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I have loads of exciting things coming up. I'm doing the Astro Project next. And I'm not going to lie, I've been working a lot with Arduino and messing around with that. And that's super fun. Would it be fun to make an Arduino series on this channel? I'm not sure if I'm reaching out of my comfort zone or if it's something that you guys would enjoy. I'm really not sure. Uh, but if, if you guys like it, then I'll gladly do it because I'm loving it. It's amazing. Okay, Ed, stop talking shite and let you guys go.